Hi there, everybody. I'm Fred Thomas, and you are watching All Things Bike. And today we are speaking with Jeff Latimer of Gus's Bike Shop in Northampton, New Hampshire. How you doing, Fred? Jeff, thanks for thank, having me. Thanks for coming down anytime. Give us the history on Gus's Bike Shop. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, sure. Gus has uh, started the shop back in 1971. He was a racer out of Belgium, so back in the days of wool jerseys and steel right. bikes. Right. Kind of coming back, actually, these yeah, days, right? exactly. But uh, he started the shop in a little tiny corner, grown since then, so wow. been there 46, 47 years. So. Wow. Yeah. How did he get to New Hampshire? Was he, was he connected somehow? Or? You know, he uh, raced in Belgium back in the late 30s, retired, mm -hmm. um, you know, due to World War II and uh, wow. moved over to the States at some point uh, in the 50s. It. And um, right. from what I understand, quit riding, yeah. got back, opened the shop, and a few years later was national champion in his age group in his 60s. So pretty there cool story. There you go. Thank goodness for Master's Category Cycling. Yeah. There's still some glory <laughs> available right. for us. Well, then how, I mean, now you've taken over the shop and, and um, it's become a, a you know, a full service um, bike shop. Give us an idea of the, the customer base and the, and the bikes and and, um, and that kind of thing. Sure. We, you know, being a suburban shop, we do it all, everything from the kids' bikes up to the high-end racing bikes. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten, uh, you know, one thing we noticed when we bought the shop, my wife's a cyclist, and there was never really anything in there in any of the shops for women. Oh, right. So she started a group uh, riding called Gus's Gals, and the first year we were really excited. We had like 12, you know, on the perfect July night. Right, right. And last year we had 58 on that perfect July night. So really right. grown over the years, a lot of women out there riding, which is great. Right, yeah, and, and cycling, um, it's the new golf, or I don't know about that, but but it's just, it's more popular perhaps, um, and it's become more accessible. The bikes have become easier to ride. And and, and tell us more about the, the clinics and the events, because that's an important way of getting people involved. Right? Yeah, sure, so one of the things we really stress is riding and community, so we're trying to create the community around the shop and helping out creating the community on the seacoast right. uh, in New Hampshire. So not only do we offer multiple shop rides, we'll do mm -hmm. clinics in the shop. Uh, we have a cyclocross team every fall, and so we usually run weekly cyclocross clinics mm -hmm. over at Rye Airfield for about six to eight weeks. Uh, during the fall to get the team going. So. Hey, great. And there's a, the, the Saturday morning ride and the, and the Wednesday night ride and, and all those, those regular scheduled event rides. Yeah, Saturday morning's a fun ride. We've got uh, different groups. So right. we're sitting there with everybody from, uh, you know, it's usually a fast group at the front and I'll do the sweep. Mm -hmm. uh, might have somebody I just sold a bike to that week that know how to shift. So I'm in the right, back right. teaching them how to shift. There you go. Um, and one of the fun things about it, we'll stop at a place called KB's Coffee about uh, 20 miles into the ride or about uh, 35 if you do the 40 and it gives a great opportunity for everybody to get together, right. have a little social time, get to know each other. And it's really nice for me to see people that have met on our rides now out doing training rides. Right, and, right, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's very civilized and, and there, there are a lot of um, rides actually don't really have the, the coffee aspect of, of it or they, it's, it, you know, it's, it's something that we'll take note of right. here great. in Maine. But now tell us um, about, um, about the touring you've done and, and the, the connection of, of um, you know, the Gus's bike shop to touring and, and your experience with it. Yeah, sure. So a few years back, um, one of the brands we carry is Raleigh, and we were invited by Raleigh to do a ride called, um, it's Seattle to Portland. Uh, so it's a two-day, 200-mile wow. ride, mm -hmm. so 100 miles each day, basically. And after that, my wife said, you know, this is a great way to see the country when you're traveling at the speed of the bike. It's not yeah, too really. fast, not too slow. And, you know, I took right. note and <laughs> had always uh, kind of eyed doing some bike touring. Yeah. And so that next year we went up to uh, Montreal and there's a great trail up there, a rail trail called Petit Train du Nord. Mm -hmm. And they've got it dialed in. You can mm -hmm. call a 1-800 number. You pick up the shuttle in a little suburb of Montreal, they drive you 200 kilometers away, drop you off, right. you ride back, you can do it in, you know, one, two, three, four days. Most people do it in four because, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you can stay in B&Bs and you go yeah. through 14 villages, you can stop and get a croissant. It's a wow. very civilized uh, yeah, yeah. tour. Great little introduction to it. Yeah, it sounds great. And and, and uh, it's it's all trail, or uh, like a rail trail? or Completely you go stone dust, rail trail the entire way. No Some of it's paved, uh, about mm -hmm. half of it's paved, but you never have to, uh, I mean, it's you can't get lost, you just follow right. the signs, right? That's great, so, yeah, no, so no need for your Garmin, really, and, uh, right. um, and just uh, your food and, and, uh, and a good attitude. Well, tell us about um, um, the, the, tour that you did, the tour you did this summer, or last summer, the, the yeah, great so Allegheny. 
out of our right. touring experience, we've actually we've led some tours through the shop, which has mm -hmm. been fun. And then we started eyeing doing something a little longer. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the gap or the Great Allegheny Passage, and that goes from Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland. And then that ties into the CNO Canal, which right. goes from Cumberland to DC. So total was 350 miles over seven days. Wow, so. that's a that's a yeah, that's a remarkable uh, you know, long trip, I would think. I mean, mountains. I mean, you're going through mountains and, and whatnot. Yeah. So the cool thing was the uh, canal was started by uh, or envisioned by George Washington to get people up to you know to help create that uh, entry to the west and get out to the Great Lakes and some right. of the other rivers to which were the highways back in the day, mm -hmm. and they started the canal. And before it finished and got to Cumberland, the train had been invented, tracks were laid down, and the train That's beat right, the canal right. to Cumberland and then on up to Pittsburgh. Right. So the trail is a combination of rail trail and the old towpath that the mules used Would to use pull to tow the, the boats, the yeah, barges. The barges yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then, um, well, describe some of the the terrain of, of this of of the of the gap. Um, yeah, the gap Before was spectacular, um, and really all of it, you're going, you're following the old waterways that are going to be mm -hmm. in the valleys. The uh, railroads follow the same path, if you will, that the mm -hmm. canals did, and it's really spectacular riding. A lot of times, some, mm -hmm. some rail trails can just be that tunnel of green, yeah. but the nice thing <laughs> about uh, the gap is that you've got a lot of views. Mm -hmm. You're in the Allegheny Mountains. You're crossing these great rivers where, uh, like we'll see in the film, Ohio Pile, where there's a big culture of whitewater rafting and right. kayaking. So a lot going on, a lot to see, right, right. great little towns. Not the, the green way. green tunnel, excellent. Right. Hey, well, you took uh, three great videos of it, so let's, let's take a quick look. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. Those are you're you're a film producer, cyclist, um, um, and and you captured the spirit of these places, I think, pretty well. Um, well what's thanks. remarkable is the is the, the the trestles and the tunnels, and and it's not that tunnel of green. I mean, I mean, how how common or how frequently are you going over a bridge or through a tunnel? 
You're, well, the cool thing about the trip, you're by the river almost the whole time. So mm -hmm. you're by actually three different rivers as you're taking the, the trip. And that uh, the first day you're heading out, of get, finding your way out of Pittsburgh. A little bit of, urban, a little yeah. bit of the uh, urban yeah. piece. Yeah. Yeah. But very cool in that you're going by that history. You know, when I grew up, I had this vision of Pittsburgh as just a giant belching steel mill, right, right. you know. Right. And uh, the town has cleaned itself up. There's new development, the pass, the bike pass that are part of that. And yet you'll come around the corner, it'll be this enormous piece of metal that did something back in the day. Right. But it's so big that they haven't even bothered to try to they move, can't it. move it. Yeah. And uh, so definitely you've got that feel of the old uh, yeah. industry. And, and it's like kind of going back in time, going, you know, from uh, the modern days of Pittsburgh, you know, back to the canals as you get further yeah. down the path. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of history back in there too. I mean, there, there were some older buildings that looked like there was a log cabin and then um, another structure that might look like a castle. What, uh, do you remember what those were? Yeah, so that first day we uh, there went to Periopolis, and mm -hmm. a little tiny town actually laid out by George Washington. I think that cabin is something left over from those right. days. Mm -hmm. um, and so he laid it out. It's a grid, I think, similar to D.C. So, right, there's a circle downtown. Oh, yeah. and, uh, but a very small Avenue town. A. And then the castle is actually a Russian Orthodox church with an amazing gold uh, yeah. steeples that they had. Yeah, wow. Well, um, and what about the, the people that you see on the trail? I mean, I mean, are there a lot of people? And, and um, what's, what's that like? Yeah, so as you, you know, when you're leaving Pittsburgh or arriving, mm -hmm. you always tell when you're getting near a town because you start seeing the dog walkers and the people oh, yeah, yeah. that are just kind of out for the day. Right. So you know you're starting to get close to the next uh, town when you're in between the towns. It's just mm -hmm. you and you'll see people pass in the other direction. Right. Although most people go Pittsburgh towards D.C. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is it's uh, a slow uphill and then a steeper downhill into Cumberland for like the last 20 miles as you go over what's called the Eastern Continental Divide. Mm -hmm. So because of that, when you're in those stretches between a town, you know, mm -hmm. there will be people on the trail, but a lot of times it's just you. You have the feeling of, you know, a lot of solitude, which is great. Right. But you also see people that become your friends over the week because you encounter them at restaurants oh, right, right. or in the different towns. You catch up and then they pass right. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and what um, wildlife? I mean, are there deer leaping out or? or um, yeah, definitely. Like you've got the wildlife. You know, different birds, different things that you're seeing, and mm -hmm. of course, a lot of trains. Because even though we are on a rail track, the yeah. old train, there was at one point trains going up and down each side of the river competing. So there's the kind of a constant presence of the coal trains, oh, real train, yeah. trains going by. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, I mean, that's cool. And and um, well, I mean, I mean, what's going through your your mind in terms of economic development when when you ride this trail? I mean, you 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 see these great coffee shops and restaurants and 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 I mean, it must have popped into your head. I mean, why can't we do that in New Hampshire? Yeah. So it, exactly. It's. Uh, that's one of the things that's really intrigued me. Mm -hmm. On my first trip, I was driving uh, up to get dropped off in Canada, and the driver just kind of was, we were talking, and mm -hmm. it was amazing the stories of what it's done to the towns and the businesses. And I witnessed that on the Great Allegheny Passage. So the first video, you'll see a little place there called the Trailside Inn Cafe. And that gentleman, as I understand it, went to the bank, tried to get a loan, and because he was wanted to do something around the trail and get out of what he was doing at the time. And mm -hmm. the bank said no, but there was a fund called the Progress Fund that was very interested in what he was doing and what they had envisioned of, yeah. of bringing business to these small coal towns as industry left. And so he built that cafe. He's got a bike shop underneath. It's booming. Across yeah. the river, a gentleman bought one bed and breakfast, and the day he owns four plus a motel, and most of their business is mm -hmm. people coming off the trail and spending the night. Wow, and 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 um, it's not just cyclists though either. I mean, is it do people hike and and uh, ski it? I imagine. Yeah. So in the uh, the winter, they've got people skiing, but predominantly, you know, the business for is off of the trail, mm -hmm. and the impact of the trail, just that gap portion, that Pittsburgh to Cumberland. Right. Uh, they just finished a study. It's about fifty million a year in direct spin into those towns along the trail. Wow. So that's just like 
me buying the burger, it's before the guy turns around and pays his employee. So that right, right. 50 million, of course, gets multiplied. Right, the multiplier effect. Well, that's, um, I mean, so how is that translated to, um, to New Hampshire or New England? Or what, what have you learned um, as you've sort of ridden the trail and thought about it? I think we've got a great opportunity here in New England to do something. We have the Eastern Trail, of course, that's coming up from uh, Elliott, Maine, up into Portland. Right. Um, and a portion of that has been stone dusted. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, we're working in New Hampshire to get a piece along the seacoast for the Seacoast Greenway. So one day, Boston to Portland. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm really excited about uh, what is now going to be called the Granite State Rail Trail. And that's going to be between Lebanon in the north, down the Salem in the south. Mm -hmm. And that's going to connect uh, the 52 miles that has been done by a group uh, called the Northern Rail Trail right. with trails down in Salem, Derry, Wyndham, London, Derry. And connect all of that across right. the state. And I right. think, you know, we'll have about that same kind of link that the gap does, that Pittsburgh yeah. to Cumberland piece. So Yeah, I mean is I mean do you I mean the multiplier effect, is it is it larger once you begin to piece together all the smaller bits of, of the of the trail? Um, or or do or can some of these trails sort of operate uh, on their own uh, independently? I think the um, there's certainly economic advantages even for mm -hmm. small trails. I mean, it's uh, health and wellness for communities, uh, mm -hmm. getting people outside. There's definitely benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the section of trail that's not yet really connected past, you know, say on the London Dairy, there's a mm -hmm. coffee shop in Dairy called the Grind Rail Trail yeah. Cafe. Yeah. And they're opening a second location further down the trail because of the success they've had sure, right. there. So, That's great. you know, even that short stretch has got some great potential. Right. But when you link it together and you can start getting people coming in from across the country or even across the world like they have in the Gap because mm -hmm. they want to spend that vacation, now yeah. that cyclist where, you know, you drive across New Hampshire in a day or less, yeah, right? Yeah, you don't see anything that way. But if you're riding a bike, yeah. you're going to spend the night, you're going right. to eat, you're going to spend yeah. the night, eat, you know, so you're spending money all the way down the trail, right. and that's what really creates that economic driver. And, and you'll see more of the state in those four days than, than you would have if you just, you know, right. did the drive. Right. Um, but it, what are the, I mean, the, the gap, as I understand it, is, is about 40 small trails that have been um, sort of co uh, coordinate together and under one organization. Um, and that's the vision, I, I imagine, for the Granite State um, rail trails. But I mean, what what is the? I mean, how easy is it to link them all together? I mean, there must be some challenges in there. I like to joke that it moves at the pace of government, ah. uh, <laughs> which is slow. Um, well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's uh, relentless. It, you know, there's uh, a lot of hardworking volunteers out there that mm -hmm. made the trails that are there. Um, you know, passable, safe, got the stone dust down. Right. I mean, it's remarkable when I look at the Northern Rail Trail, what they've done in the 10 years or so they've been around, and maybe they're probably there longer mm -hmm. starting the process, but they've done a great job of getting grants. Right, yeah. Talk about that. I mean, there, there are these organizations, the, the, the uh, Rail to Trail Conservancy and then the Eastern Trail Alliance. I mean, those are right. over, uh, overhanging or you know, over you know, larger entities that help, and um, talk about that for a bit. Sure, so you've got the uh, Rails to Trail, you've got the Eastern Trail organization, yeah. um, and then you have the East Coast Greenway, which is looking to connect and build an urban Appalachian Trail that would mm -hmm. go from Florida up all the way to uh, Canada, and now mm -hmm. they're talking of, in Canada of connecting to that to make the longest trail in the world. Right. That's about 30 to 40% done off-road right now, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they don't really have the funding. So all of this is groups, local groups, piecing right. together the trails with that vision. And so in the gap, they had about 40 organizations that came together and created the Allegheny Trail Alliance. Mm -hmm. And we have looked at that model and we have just recently incorporated the Granite State Rail Trail, mm -hmm. which would be the marketing arm, if you will, right. that would help to create maybe the website so the maps are found. I mean, one of the challenges right now, if you wanted to ride from Salem to Lebanon, to get all the maps, you've got to go in each little yeah, right. town's website to pick up the map for that town. 
and we could have something out there that would show that path from one end to the right, other. Right, right, so. yeah, and then that would make it a lot easier for people to understand, right. a lot easier for people to um, ride it, and, and uh, I imagine the, the, the economic activity would, would follow. Um, well, um, just tell us some, some of the stories from, from the touring that, that um, you did um, at, at, in, uh, you know, at The Gap, or even yeah. in New Hampshire. I mean, who do you so, meet, what goes on? Yeah, The Gap was fantastic. You know, my wife says camp's a four-letter word. Uh, so I we tend that. to yep. do uh, what's called the credit card tour. So yeah, yeah. we're, <laughs> you know, uh, as we'll see here in a little bit with a bike, yep. we're, we're kind of uh, going uh, minimalist, so we're not going to have to carry too much gear, which is nice. So we're yeah. still able to roll along at a nice pace. Mm -hmm. But at the start of the tour, we said, you know, this is all about touring and seeing things. And so if there's something mm -hmm. somebody in our group wants to stop and look at, we're going to stop and look at it. So we just... Um, it was funny, every day, no matter what time we started, we finished at four o'clock, either because we had a lot of miles to cover mm -hmm. or we didn't have as many miles, so we just made more stops and enjoyed the day. And yeah. uh, lots of great museums and things. But the most fabulous day, I'd have to say, was day three, right. where you go through, you go across the eastern, what they call the Eastern Continental Divide. Yeah, right. And then you go through a tunnel that um, is over one mile long. So you're riding through this tunnel and you come out of there and you're going mm -hmm. over another valley with this, they call it a viaduct that connects the top of two valleys, again, almost a mile long. So things that you, know, you don't normally get to do on a bike is to ride through tunnels. That was one yeah. of four or five tunnels on the trip. So yeah, I mean, there, I mean I, there are not many tunnels around here, and, and I mean, it, it's, it can be a surreal experience, and, um, yeah, and, and right. I mean, if you really want tunnels, I guess you, you have to go to Switzerland, but um, <laughs> um, there might be one in New Hampshire, right? Is there an opportunity to run a, eh, maybe not. But, I, I don't know if there are any out there on the rail trails, but <laughs> you quickly learn to take the sunglasses take off, because the, the sunglasses first one we off. came to, yeah. I could see the other end. It was like, I'll just ride through here. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, got in the middle, I was like, whoa. Yeah, easier said than done. Right. Well, are you, uh, just to, to wrap up a bit, are you, are you seeing uh, more interest in touring um, from your customers um, as a result of the touring you've done and, and maybe the, the changes in the bikes? And, uh, yeah, certainly like the that. touring I've done, but I also think, you know, there's a huge uh, movement in the industry towards what's called bike packing. You're going to hear that phrase a lot. Uh, touring used to be limited to throw a rack on your bike, yeah, get a couple right. of bags, and uh, go off and tour and we kind of lost all that in the uh, Lance days if you will when all, we all wanted to be racers mm -hmm. and people are really rediscovering that they can get out there and uh, travel by bike yeah. and take that bike into some really great places yeah. that you could perhaps only bike pack or right. backpack and now you can right. get your bike right? yeah yeah no it's I think it's t yeah, it's time to uh, change the, uh, the 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 touring um, uh, description of bike touring is that you say that and, and for most people you know the big panniers on the front wheel and the, and the and the you know the great big uh, old heavy bike sort of pops right. into into the mind but but um, the technology has advanced so much that that um, you know the bikes are different you can carry more stuff ride better and, and yeah uh, and let's the, call it something the else. best bike you have to bike tour with is the bike you've got so you can simply get a bag that right. you'll see here in a minute that straps yeah. onto the bike of the bike throw some clothes in and just head out yeah. the door and head to a and b or something for the weekend or you yeah. know, just do a quick overnight yeah, yeah. well th this bike's not very useful for touring but um i, I think yeah. um i but think the one that you brought you is still hook a bag up to that <laughs> and make it work for you yeah 20 miles is the maximum <laughs> range on that one. right on okay jeff thanks so much for coming hey, down and, and talking about that all right, everybody, that was Jeff Latimer of Gus's Bike Shop. And you can learn more about um, the shop online and on Facebook. And you can also learn more about the touring he's done and the clinics he offers that are related to touring. Uh, thanks so much for watching. We will see you again soon. All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Zentis, performance carbon wheels handmade in Austria for road and off-road riding. Zentis, next generation wheels and frame and wheel ebay bike selling services time space cash pick three and ad bikes the modern face of austro daimler cycling and the bike company of the future